Hello everyone, welcome back. The topic for today is biofilms in endodontics. Now we know about the biofilms in periodontics. So now what is exactly biofilms which is having the role in endodontics? So I'm going to explain about that in this particular video. So what is the definition of biofilm? So biofilm, it can be defined as a sessile multicellular microbial community. Sessile is when the microorganisms, they are immobile, they cannot move. So basically your biofilm is nothing but it is a community of microorganisms in which the microorganisms they are present in multiple forms and the number is also huge. So that is nothing but a community. Community is where you'll have various types of microorganisms and there are like a numerous types and the number of microorganisms. So it is nothing but it is a multicellular microbial community and this is characterized by when this microorganisms they are attached to some surface. Now in the case of like periodontics, so in that we have seen that in plaque, the plaque it gets attached to your tooth surface. Now in plaque you have the bacteria. So basically your bacteria is only getting attached to the tooth surface and it will form that biofilm. So biofilm is basically, so the most important thing in this is, so the first point in your biofilm definition, it will be, it is a microbial community. And in this, this microorganisms, they are attached to the surface. So that becomes the next point. And the third important point for your biofilm definition will be, so this like microorganism, so this community of microorganisms, it is embedded in a self-produced matrix of the extracellular polymeric substances. So that becomes like the third and the most important part of your biofilm. So now for example, if we like take a print of a paper and then we want to like prevent the destruction of the paper. So in that case, what we do is we just laminate that paper. So that lamination is nothing but like a film that is preventing the destruction of the paper. So in that, in so in this biofilm also, so it is nothing but it is the film which is covering the bacteria. So this film, it is produced by the bacteria itself only. And this film, it looks or it feels like slime. And it is a matrix of that extracellular polymeric substances. So this film, it prevents the destruction of your microorganisms. And they become resistance towards various like responses that can be chemical responses. So that is nothing but your biofilm. So the three main important points is, it is the community of microorganisms, then it is attached to the surface and then it is embedded in that like film. So it is embedded in the matrix of the extracellular polymeric substances. Now what are the various characteristics of biofilm? So in this the biofilm it should possess this four characteristics. So first is autopoiesis. So that is nothing but the ability to self-organize. Now in this the bacteria now it is a community of microorganisms. Now in this you'll see that this microorganisms they are not present haphazardly but they are like organized properly. So this is the first characteristic that they have the ability to self-organize. The next one is the homeostasis. That means it should resist the environmental disturbances. So like this is the main important factor why the biofilm is making or producing that matrix of the extracellular like polymeric substances to resist the environmental disturbances. So this is the next characteristic that it should resist the environmental disturbances. The third characteristic is synergy. Now you know what is synergism. Synergism is basically you are taking the help of other microorganisms. So now in this the biofilm now in the biofilm you have a community of microorganisms. So in this there are various microorganisms which are present. So now in this the third characteristic is now this biofilm it is effective in association than in isolation. So that means when you have various microorganisms so the, all the microorganisms they take help of each other and they are more effective so that becomes the third characteristic and the fourth one is the communality so that is nothing but it responds to the environmental changes as a unit rather than a single individual now in this community you have various microorganisms so in this if there is any environmental change like if you want to change or if you want to do some changes in this biofilm so that what happens in this biofilm characteristic is now this will react as a whole biofilm and not like you have this separate microorganisms or this separate microorganism but in this the biofilm it should respond to that changes like as a unit as a whole unit one so that are the various characteristics of the biofilm
now how is the ultra structure of the biofilm so the basic structure of biofilm will be so the first point will be it is having the heterogeneous arrangement of the microbial cells so we have seen already in the definition that there are various types of microbial cells which are present in the biofilm and the next important thing is they are attached to a solid surface so that only will form a biofilm if your microorganisms they are freely present so that is not your biofilm biofilm is when the microorganisms they are attached to some solid surface so this is the first point that is there are various types of microorganisms microbial cells which are present and they are attached on the solid surface over here now you can see this are the various microorganisms and they are attached to the like substrate that is your solid substance or the surface the next will be there is a formation of this matrix which is produced by this bacteria only so there is a glycocalyx matrix which is made up of extra polymeric substance and it surrounds the microorganisms to the substrate so over here now you can see this are your microorganisms and this is the matrix which is formed by this microorganisms and in this the biofilm in this 85% of your biofilm is made up of this matrix and only 15% is made up of this cell so now you can see how like the cells in this biofilm it becomes resistance towards various responses because now in this they are making such huge matrix for their protection against various responses so this is the next point of your structure the next will be a fully hydrated biofilm it appears like a mushroom shape or a tar shape so in this now you can see this is a fully formed biofilm it is appearing like a mushroom shape and the next thing will be in this the water channels they are primitive circulatory system in biofilm so in this the circulation is because of the water which is present so now in the case now we have saliva so saliva is helping this biofilm that means the saliva is only the circulatory system for your biofilm so this is the ultra structure of your biofilm so now how is the formation of the biofilm so biofilm it is basically formed in this five stages so the first stage of the biofilm will be when there is the formation of a conditioning film which is formed so in this what happens is there will be adsorption of the macromolecules in the planktonic phase so planktonic phase is when the microbes they are free floating in the water so that will be a planktonic phase so now in this now in the diagram you can see so your microorganisms they are floating freely and they are getting transported toward your surface that is a solid surface now in the definition we have said it is said as a biofilm when your microorganisms it is getting attached to the surface if they are not attached so they are not the biofilm so in the first stage your microorganisms which are free floating they go towards this surface so that becomes the first stage now the next stage will be when the microorganisms they are getting properly attached to the solid surface and in the next stage also so in the second stage itself there will be the production of that matrix that is your polymeric substance production so that is the second stage in which your microorganism it is getting attached to your solid surface and it like starts the formation of the extracellular polymeric substance so now in the third stage there will be the multiplication of that attached microorganisms and there will be more and more production of the extracellular polymeric substance and that will lead to the formation of the proper biofilm and in the fourth stage there will be maturation of the biofilm and it provides the protection against the host defense mechanism and the antibiotics in the fourth stage so it becomes a proper maturated like biofilm and then in the five like in the fifth stage it involves the detachment of the biofilm microorganism so that are like the five basic stages in the formation of the biofilm now we are going to see like properly the formation of the biofilm with the help of another diagram so now in this now you can see over here so this is a planktonic phase in which your microorganisms they are free floating so they will go and it will like it will get transported towards your surface so there will be attachment to the surface so this microorganisms they get attached to the surface then there will be the production of over here now you can see the yellow color one is your matrix so in the second stage now as i have said there is formation of that matrix so there will be formation of the micro colonies or the mono layers so now for example now as this microorganisms they are getting transported so obviously they are having that flagella for that transportation so in this second stage you will see that this flagella it is lost and they like start producing this matrix so there is the formation of a mono layer and the production of the matrix in your second stage the third one is the micro colony formation and there are like the more and more production so there are more microorganisms which are coming and there will be more and more production of your matrix that is your extracellular polymeric substance 
and then this is the fourth stage in which your biofilm it is matured one and it gives that mushroom shape as we have seen in the ultra structure so it is giving that mushroom shape or the tar shape and then the fifth stage will be the detachment and the reversion of the planktonic growth starting a new cycle so this are like the various stages of your biofilm formation so fifth is basically your biofilm it gets detached and it again goes to this planktonic like growth and that leads to the formation of a new cycle so this is the formation of the biofilm now which are the various types of biofilm so the first one is the intracanal then the next one is the extra radicular the third one is periapical and the fourth one is a biomaterial centered infection so now we are going to see each one of them in detail so the first one is the intracanal biofilm now as the name says it is formed so the biofilm it is formed in the root canal so there is the formation of the biofilm on the root canal dentine of an infected tooth so in this the biofilm it is adhered or it is like attached to the dentine of your root canal and there will be formation of this intracanal biofilm and it was first identified by nayer in 1987 and in this you will see there will be various cocci rods filaments and spirochetes which are present in this type of biofilm and there are distinct types of bacteria which are seen in this biofilm and the most common example of the microorganism which is present in this type of biofilm that is your intracanal biofilm will be the ecterococcus fecalis so this is about the intracanal biofilm the next is the extra radicular biofilm so now this extra radicular biofilm it is termed as the root surface biofilm why because it is formed on the root surface that is the cementum and that is adjacent to your root apex of the endodontically treated teeth so now when you have done the treatment endodontically so the biofilm which is like formed on the root surface adjacent to your apex will be your extra radicular biofilm so it is basically the sites for your extra radicular biofilm will be so it is found in the teeth with asymptomatic periapical periodontitis or in the case of chronic apical abscess with the sinus tract so in this two scenarios you will see this extra radicular biofilm the next in the next point in this extra radicular will be there are various types of species which are present in this extra radicular biofilm so that will be first fusobacterium nucleatum the next one will be the next bacteria which is present will be porphyromonas gingivalis and t forsythenia so these are the various like microorganisms which are present in this extra radicular biofilm now in this it is dominated by the cocci and short rods with the cocci which are attached to the tooth substrate now in this you will see if the extra radicular it is calcified so that will lead to the delayed periapical healing so that is about your extra radicular biofilm so your extra radicular it is formed on the root surface which is adjacent to the root apex of the endodontically treated teeth the third one is the periapical biofilm now as the name says periapical so this biofilm it is present periapical in the periapical region of the endodontically involved teeth now in this the microorganisms which are present in the periapical biofilm will be actinomycosis or porphyromonas propionicum so now in this the aggregation of the actinomycosis cells it is influenced by the ph by the ionic strength then by the cells concentration which facilitates the biofilm formation now in this there is periapical region so in this it is formed in the periapical region so the aggregation of this microorganisms it is influenced by these three factors which leads to the formation of this periapical biofilm the fourth one is the biomaterial centered infection now what do you mean by this biomaterial centered infection so this biomaterial basically centered infection is nothing but when the bacteria they get adhered some, to some artificial biomaterial so like for example if you have done your endodontic treatment now you are filling that canal with the obturating material that is your cutta percha so what happens in this is the bacteria it goes and it gets adhered to that obturating material and that will lead to the formation of the biofilm which is known as a biomaterial centered infection because now this bacteria it is going and it is attaching a artificial biomaterial so now in this it usually reveals the opportunistic like invasion by the nosocomial organisms so now basically your bacteria they are taking the opportunity or they have this opportunity they taking the advantage of this material and they like form this biofilm so for example staphylococcus enterococci streptococci so these are the various microorganisms that you will see in this biomaterial centered infection 
Now in this, so the formation of this biofilm, it is described in three phases. So first phase will be same as we have seen for the formation that will be the transportation of the bacteria to the surface that is your biomaterial surface that can be your obturating material. The next phase will be, there will be initial non-specific adhesion phase in which your like microorganism, it is getting, it is getting like adhered to your surface that is your biomaterial. And the third phase will be, there will be the proper or the specific adhesion in which your microorganism, it get properly adhered to the surface. And there will be the formation of your like uh, material on the matrix. And in that will later, it will multiply and there will be maturation of your biofilm. So that is nothing but like how your biomaterial centered infection or the biomaterial centered biofilm they are formed. So now we have seen everything about the biofilm. So now these biofilms, they are the main reason for your endodontic failure because now if this now, as we have seen like everything about biofilm, so now we can see that the biofilm, they are very resistant towards various things. And because of that only, you are unable to remove that biofilm properly and that will lead to the endodontic failure. So it is very important to eradicate this biofilm properly. So the various ways of eradication of the biofilm will be, so the first is, you're using sodium hypochlorite. That is, you're irrigating your canal with sodium hypochlorite properly. So it is, so sodium hypochlorite, it is effective against biofilm which are containing intermedia, P intermedia, then peptostreptococcus micros, then the staphylococcus intermediates, fusobacterium. So this sodium hypochlorite, it is effective against this various microorganisms. Why? Because now this sodium hypochlorite, it inhibits the DNA synthesis of bacteria and that will lead to like the, so if your DNA synthesis of the bacteria, it is only inhibited. So obviously your bacteria, it cannot survive in that like situation. So your bacteria, it will die. So this is like the first way of eradication of the sodium hypochlorite. So now in this, what you can use or what you can do, this is a very like point in which like which you can use clinically that what you can do is you can like heat up the sodium chloride so like to improve the efficacy of sodium hypochlorite you can use a heated solution why because it will like improve the immediate tissue dissolution capacity of the sodium hypochlorite the next method of eradication is you can use chlorhexidine digluconate so now this chlorhexidine it is effective against both the gram negative and the gram positive bacteria what your chlorhexidine does is it denatures the bacterial cell wall and because of that there will be leakage of the intracellular organism. So in this the bacteria which is like affected by this chlorhexidine dicloconate is the uh, enterococci fecalis. So now over here this is the mechanism of your chlorhexidine. So this is the chlorhexidine. The chlorhexidine goes into this biofilm. Then this biofilm now you can see over here. So there is the leakage of the bacteria which is present in this biofilm and that will lead to the like destruction of your biofilm. The third one is the EDTA. You can use EDTA gel. So now in this, it extracts the bacterial proteins by combining with the cell envelope protein and results in the bacterial cell death. So your EDTA basically like results in the bacterial cell death and it also inhibits the growth of the bacteria and it destroys them by starvation. So this is the third way in which like by which you can like er eradicate your biofilms. The fourth way is using a omix. So omix is nothing but when a mixture of EDTA, chlorhexidine and a detergent it is used and it is effective as 6% sodium hypochlorite in killing one day old E. fecalis. Now if the fecalis is weeks old, so in that case you cannot use this omix. So if your fecalis it is only one day old, so th this omix it can kill such type of bacteria. The next way can be you can use iodine. Now iodine, it is bactericidal, it is fungicidal, it is tuberculocidal, it is virucidal, it is sporodicidal. So it is basically killing all types of various microorganisms. So it attacks the protein, nucleotides and the fatty acid which results in the cell death. So this is the next like material which you can use that is your iodine. The next is the antibiotic that is the MTDA paste. So now in this you use tetracycline. Now we know tetracycline, it is bacteriostatic. So this is a bacteriostatic, so tetracycline, it is a bacteriostatic broad spectrum antibiotic. It has the low pH and it is a calcium chelator. So this is the about MTDA that it has this tetracycline, which is a antibiotic. Then it also has citric acid, which helps in the removal of the smear layer. And it also has the detergent, which decreases the surface tension. So it usually kills all of the fecalis strains. 
and the high binding of doxycycline it prolongs the antibacterial effect now we know tetracycline doxycycline so they are the various types of this broad spectrum antibiotic so you can use tetracycline and you can also use doxycycline so doxycycline it is having a prolonged antibacterial effect so this is about the mtda that you can use mtda the next can be you can use a calcium hydroxide base so now this calcium hydroxide it is basically ineffective in killing the enterococcus faecalis on its own so what happens is so what you can do is you can combine chlorhexidine 2% chlorhexidine with calcium hydroxide and that will completely annihilate the microorganism that is your faecalis e faecalis so this is about the calcium hydroxide the next is the ultrasonic activated irrigation now in this what you can do is you can use 1% sodium hypochlorite and it helps like it improves the root canal cleaning and shaping in the isthmus region and it also helps in the debridement cleaning so this is about the ultrasonic so it helps in the cleaning of the debris so this is about the ultrasonic activated irrigation the next like type of eradication or the next way of eradicating the biofilm will be using ozone so ozone in 0.1 to 0.3 ppm it is able to kill the bacteria after 15 to 30 minutes of the contact time the next is you can use a tetraclean so tetraclean is more like effective than mtda against the like faecalis against the bacteria which is enterococcus faecalis the next way can be you can use lasers so you can use lasers against this various types of cells like microorganism that is faecalis acne nucleatum so the laser which can use is orgiac so you can like eradicate the area with orgiac laser and that will lead to the eradication of your biofilms the next way of eradicating can be photo activated disinfection so what you can do is you can combine photo sensitizer solution and the low power laser light so that is nothing but a photo activated disinfection the next can be endo activator system so it debrides the deep lateral anatomy it removes the smear layer and it dislodges the stimulated biofilm and the last way of eradicating the biofilm can be you can use a plasma dental flow and it is effective for the tooth disinfection so these are the various ways in which you can eradicate the biofilm properly so that was all about the biofilm so basically your biofilm is nothing but it is a material which is protecting the bacteria from the environmental threats then it the biofilm it helps in the like trapping of the nutrients so because of that this biofilm so the microorganisms in this biofilm they become very resistant towards the environmental threats and because of that you are unable to remove the biofilm properly and that will lead or that will end up having the endodontic failure so because of that you need to properly eradicate this biofilm so this was all about the biofilm like how it is formed then how you can eradicate it then the ultra structure and everything about it i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment share and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much